Hello everyone, it's Old Gamer Joe with another Media Moogle review, and today we're taking a look at Ministry of Broadcast. This was a game that was developed by Ministry of Broadcast Studios, and it is published by Hitsent, and what a wild experience it is. They're billing it as a narrative-driven, single-player cinematic platformer, but in my opinion, that's selling it even a little bit short because there are so many layers and so much depth to this game. There's a lot to unravel here, so let's get right into it. I've seen some comparisons being thrown around to Oddworld and Prince of Persia, and I think those are very fair, but actually what this game really reminded me of is one of my favorite games of all time, Another World, or perhaps you know it as Out of This World. It's a fantastic game, and lucky for you, Ministry of Broadcast is also a fantastic game. However, that's my opinion, and I actually think overall this might be a title that divides a lot of people, and for two main reasons. The first of those reasons would be that this control scheme is very much rooted in that Another World style, in that it is very stiff, very slow moving, prodding, and very cinematic in its animation and nature. That could potentially turn a lot of people off, especially in the platforming sections, which sometimes in this game require precision that the controls perhaps are not best suited for. There's really not a whole lot to the actual controls. You can run, you can walk slowly, depending on if there's ice or other obstacles in your way. You can jump, you can climb, and it's really basic. Not overly complicated, not hard to figure out, but that stiffness and that weight to it, which I feel is very important for the game they've created here, is not going to be for everyone, that's just me being honest. And particularly in later sections of the game where platforming becomes crucial, it can honestly be a little frustrating. Sometimes you'll swear you pushed up to jump up, but instead your character jumps forward, leading to an unfortunate death, which you will see many of, some in hilarious fashion. But again, I feel like this game loses so much of its atmosphere and feelings and emotions if it doesn't have the control scheme that it does. And the second part of this game that might be divisive for people is the storyline, which is absolutely bonkers. It takes place inside of a reality TV show and involves a country separated by a wall. You can kind of see where this is going. You're either going to really be on board with something like that, or you're going to kind of roll your eyes. But fear not, because this plot goes in some really interesting and shocking ways that you probably aren't expecting. My takeaway and my guess at what the developers were trying to go for here is perhaps we as humans oftentimes take things too seriously or out of context or let them distort into something that is not actuality. The game goes into regimes, your right to vote, and even goes as far as to question the morality of man and how far they'll go for the things that they love. But one thing I think most of us, if not all of us, will agree on with Ministry of Broadcast is the fact that the puzzles are really clever and really satisfying to figure out. I didn't find them overly mentally taxing until the second half of the game where they get much, much harder, but for the most part, they're really clever, they take a little bit of figuring out, and they take a lot of deaths before you're going to get them. Some may fault the controls for that, but I actually just think it's part of the puzzle, part of figuring it out. I actually really think the controls are, in general, kind of a puzzle. <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit weird, but they lend themselves to that mechanic of the game. Really, they should build this game more as a puzzle game because that's its strongest attribute. It's so satisfying after multiple deaths to finally figure out these puzzles and really use your brain. I don't recommend trying to cheat here because they're so satisfying. They will eventually click, and when you get that click moment, it's a great moment indeed. The idea behind the game, the fact that a man is stuck in this reality TV show and trying to get his wife back by being successful on it, is something that I have never personally come across. This is a title that can be very hard to make sense of, but still, somehow so enthralling, you just want to keep pushing through, even when the game gets frustrating in the later half, particularly day four, where I struggled with one section in particular for a long, long time, having to learn a very particular pattern and execute it perfectly, because if that execution was even a little bit off, I was going to fail. So that part of the game is challenging, and it is going to frustrate a lot of people, I believe. But those moments of frustration are always rewarded with a bizarro yet interesting plot. This game makes you feel a lot of different ways. It makes you feel sad. It makes you feel scared. It makes you laugh. It makes you uneasy. 
If there's a human emotion out there, Ministry of Broadcast manages to tap into it unlike any game I've played before. From its beautiful pixelated graphics to its amazing, chilling, just at the right moment hitting soundtrack, Ministry of Broadcast is the perfect reminder that we can't forget who we are and we can't get over encumbered by the societal problems that exist. I hope a lot of people get to play this, the best indie game of the year so far in my opinion, and if they don't play it, I was so fortunate to be a part of it. For more on Ministry of Broadcast and all of our other content, please visit MediaMogul.net, and if you've enjoyed our video content today, please do hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching.